What's good everybody, it's Bro and today guys, I'm coming to you with a brand new video, but before we get into that guys, please go ahead and leave a like on this video, of course let's try and get 20 likes on this video, we do such a good job at it, so keep it up guys, and finally, subscribe if you have not already, because we're trying to 7,000 subscribers, and we are very close to it, and again, like I said before guys, I keep on saying it, when we get closer to 7,000, I'll be able to leak some information about the giveaways, and then of course, check out all the socials down below, my Instagram and my Discord will be there as well guys, if you want to contact me directly, make sure you go ahead and join the Discord server, if not, leave a comment because i try my best to respond to each and every single one of you guys' comments but without further ado guys let's get right into the video before we continue the video guys i'm proud to announce that we have officially partnered with sleeve chief sleeve chief is an awesome website that sells a ton of Yu-Gi-Oh products and accessories and they even do anime crossovers for their Yu-Gi-Oh products if you're a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh or just looking to get some cool anime related items then sleeve chief is definitely the place to go and the best part is if you use my special code author5 at checkout you'll get five percent off all purchases made on the website so what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or head over to Sleeve Chief's website and start shopping today. All right, guys, so starting off with the video, it's going to be a different video. Again, it's a highly requested video. This is more of like a discussion with Tortsol. Um, It's going to be broken up into three parts. So the first part is going to be me breaking down individual cards. The second one is going to be generic plays that you guys should know. And then the third one is going to be a final replay of just how it, like a generic Sword Soul turn or gen generic Sword Soul play kind of continues. But anyways, guys, so starting off with the video, the first way that we really help facilitate these type of things are tenies mostly vashuda and the reason for it is you don't commit a lot when you go into these plays being that vashuda says if you control no effect monsters you can special summon this card from your hand and then that's it so you special summon vashuda your opponent has to respond either there to the summon of vashuda if they can remove that card completely aka bring it back um to the deck or banish it and then you can link it away into monk and then vashuda has the effect in graveyard where it says if you control a face up non-effect monster you can banish this card from your hand or graveyard then target one card your opponent controls and return to the hand so this card is very good because it almost all Always trades one for one if not two for two or like one for two for a lot of the cards because this forces a lot of plays because if you go special summon vashuda link into monk and they have like let's say an ip mask on the board you can either just go vashuda bounce to go ahead and bounce the ip mask or you can go into like a monk of the tenyi who actually has a thousand attack who can out um ip mask as well so your opponent has to react to the monk as opposed to Vashuda, because there aren't a lot of cards that can directly react with Vashuda, other than like Call by the Grave, and if there's like a specific like monster that can negate graveyard effects. But apart from there, Vashuda is very powerful, so that's why like a lot of people max out on Vashuda, because Vashuda can out a lot of problematic cards. You know, any card, it can out skill drains, it can out things of that nature. So usually I like to hold Vashuda in my hand um, for the final play. Again, it does suck against a Rise Heart going second, but it still has its little niches. But then moving on to some more non commit cards, guys, Ecclesia is going to be the other one, because Ecclesia says if your opponent controls more monsters than you do you can special this card it's not that if you control no cards your opponent controls cards or if you guys control the same attack like alpha it's if your opponent controls more monsters than you do meaning if we put this hand in hand with cards like for shooter where we like bounce a card and we still have like a monk on the board and they still have two monsters we can special them now ecclesia and then use the shooter to bounce alternatively you can use the tennies special them the tennies and then special them, um ecclesia as well forcing your opponent's hand on a lot of different plays because not only do you have a tuner on the board you have a non-tuner especially being a tenny which is very important so ecclesia is very good and then again she has the quick effect where you contribute it to special them now a tenny or like a source soul monster sorry from your deck um, onto the field which is really nice especially when you have like Vashuda to force kind of like a board breaker like your opponent has like for example like an IP Masquerina you can chain um Ecclesia to go ahead and dodge it and then going on to some dodge cards we do play Heavenly Dragon Circle and the Heavenly Dragon Circle is very nice as well because if you go like Norm Sun Moi um effect reveal some the token they go okay chain arise art banish the Moi because they can't banish the token um just because tokens can't be banished face down so it's not a legal activation you can trigger Heavenly Dragon Circle to tribute your Moi to get a Tenyi on the board to banish Tenyi to go ahead and um remove a problematic card on the field you can go ahead and get your ashuna to banish to get mopura you can get mopura you can get any sort of extender as well so it's really good in that regard alternatively if they do choose to pop the token you can just special them not a tenny from your deck or special them not a worm monster so it's really good in that regard and then going on i'm just showcasing long yuan because long yuan is very powerful in what he he is because again like i said before when long yuan um kind of has his effect depending on what he discards he has a lot of like two card otks which i will showcase or if not two card otks it's more like you break your opponent's board and then you set up a long yuan who burns for 12 and then sets up some big big really fat level 10s 
um so it's really good in that regard and then tie in blackout if you guys don't know when you normally summon tie and you banish blackout blackout will essentially get you another token so tie essentially generates two tokens with himself so he's very powerful because it helps facilitate tiny plays a lot easier especially it puts your opponent in a hard spot because they can't just pop the token they have to pop other cards now so it makes long you want even better um and then we have the book of moons the ash blossoms the nibs and the game so like i was saying before with these cards in particular um these are non-engine this is what source Soul really thrives off of playing non-engine so you can kind of rely on your non-engine with your engine to break a lot of boards otherwise you can just rely all on your engine cards to break boards because these cards all work hand in hand with each other and on top of that they also help break boards so like one of my favorite plays like an underrated plays like you go normal moe you reveal like a blackout summon a token that you just banish for shooter from the hand target a monster on the field it forces their negates so it forces like an arise to banish then you chain heavy dragon circle and you just bait all their negates um a lot of the problematic cards as well so it's really good but then moving on to the extract guys um one of the key ways that we outboards is like yazzy the way we do this is um ty can banish the spell card which i will showcase the spell card can level modulate to go ahead and summon out a yazzy onto the board then yazzy can pop himself in another card and then special summon out any worm monster from your deck so the reason why i like to do this is if you go yazzy um go ahead and pop a card special summon out of a shooter link for shooting to monk then the shooter can bounce another card you out a lot of problematic cards in the same vein baxi has the same effect where he says when this card is synchro summon you can target cards on the field up to the number of different attributes um of the worm monsters used for the synchro summon and shuffle them back into the deck this will makes taya very powerful because taya is a wind monster the sword soul token is going to be a water so that's two different attributes alternatively and this is why i was saying that i really like mapura in that regard because mapura is a fire monster um and the token is a water so it gives you two spins whereas opposed to shtana how do i spell this card shtana i don't know how to spell this card shtana I suppose, there you go. As opposed to Thana, who's a water monster. So if you special summon Heavenly Dragon Circle into the water in the water, it's two waters, so you don't get two spins. So Mapur is very good in that regard, getting double spins. Let's get rid of these cards. Then you have the Draco Berserker, who essentially is like a pseudo Boral Sword, where he if he destroys um, an effect monster by battle, he gains attack equal to the destroyed monster original attack, which is a permanent gain. Then he can attack again. So he gets really problematic, um, especially when he like attacks a 2k monster. He goes to 5k and he can swing again. So he helps facilitate a lot of underrated OTKs, um, especially paired with Cheng Ying, because Cheng Ying makes your opponent lose 100 attack makes you gain 100 attack Drake berserker gains the uh, original attack um blah blah right here attack able to destroy monster original attack so even if tanging is lowering it doesn't matter because Drake berserker still gains it and then it's lowering so it helps facilitate a lot of otks and then baron as well going second baron forces a lot of plays makes long yuan very powerful because if you go long yuan discard summon a token like let's say long yuan discard vishuda summon a token they have to deal with the vishuda bounce they also have to deal with the baron um summoning onto the floor meaning that baron can pop a card and then stops another negate as well so it's very important in that regard so you guys can see just off of the engine slash non-engine cards alone so also has a lot of ways of going second and breaking boards but that's not all so right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you about two to three plays that you guys should really understand and add to your arsenal when you're going second or just in general on how to break the boards all right guys so the first play i'm going to showcase you guys again you guys notice i'm not playing against anyone or anything like that the first play i'm going to show you is a perfect game line now the reason why i say it's a perfect game is it guarantees you to otk your opponent or do ak damage so it's a perfect game line. again it's a classic test hand just a random test hand i drew um i have ash boss on book of moon evenly match and then mo you plus engine so it's very important like i was showcasing before guys you have three non-engine cards that help kind of break your board prevent your opponent from playing the game shut down their negates and again force negates but let's say for example our opponent just playing a back row deck or something they don't really set up a lot of negates or they kind of mess up their play i'll showcase you guys how we basically set up perfect game and the reason why we do it and you guys can see here is you essentially go to mo yi um i'll just speed through this so mo yi will go ahead and summon a token then here we can sink our way into our shishao and our mo yi so again drawing it's really nice what we draw but it doesn't really matter into our long yuan then from here we can go ahead and activate emergence emergence can go ahead and grab us our ashuna because emergence says is if you control a synchro monster you can add one worm monster instead meaning that we can go ahead and grab the ashuna and then from here we can go ahead and use long yuan to discard to go ahead and summon a token and then from here we go ahead and use ashuna's effect to go ahead and banish to special summon out our adhara which i'll explain later on but from here we can go ahead and synchro summon our monsters away into our big fat Cheng ying this will go ahead and trigger long yuan to burn for 1200 so it puts our opponent down to 68 and then on top of that um we still have monk we have atara which can banish to go ahead and add a shuna which will trigger changing to go ahead banish some more cards as well depending on what they kept with evenly matched things of that nature and here you guys can realize that it's called perfect game because it's monk plus changing plus shisha so 1028 and 3000 so it's very good and again i quickly did a quick test hand just to showcase you how consistent you can go for perfect game and even with this hand it's perfect game as well because you go normal mo you reveal um the atara or the long yuan some token going to shisha shisha add emergence emergence get 
Ashuna and then long you want to discard Ashuna summon and you guys can do the exact same way as well so it's really powerful um, in that regard but that's it for the first combo I just think that's something that you guys should understand where if you go 1000 plus the long you want burn which is 12 plus 3000 plus 28 it'll always be perfect game so it's important to kind of read the lines that you're given against your opponent or just any sort of board and then you can kind of interact and just sculpt your hand to play around those things using the non-engine and the 10 to break the board and then follow up with the perfect game line which I just showcased there but that's it for like the first play guys and I'm going to showcase the second play all right guys so now we are getting on to the second play now the second play is going to be another variant that you can do if you open these two cards so again it's sword soul plus a name or anything like that um so it's a very generic play so you're basically going sword soul emergence to get taya and this is what a lot of people were asking for how do you level modulate so I'll showcase right here so you go ahead and taya tab will go ahead and banish the emergence to summon out a token now emergence has the effect where it says if this card is banished you can target one sword soul monster or worm monster you control increase or decrease its level by one until the end of this turn what i like to do is i like to lower the uh, level of the token by three unless i have like another extender in hand if that's the case i'll make tire three but in this instance we'll just make the token three is perfectly fine but from here because we have a four and a three this enables us to go into a seven which is yazzy but not before we go ahead and use tires effect when he synchro summon to go ahead and dump a sword soul or worm card which is almost always going to be ashuna as you all see because ashuna helps facilitate a lot not only that is when yazzy is destroyed you can go and summon a worm monster which will enable us to go and summon out Mo Yi's, Long Yuan's, things of that nature, as you guys will see. But we go ahead and summon Yazzie. Yazzie will use this effect to go ahead and pop one card. So that's that's one card that we pop from our opponent to go ahead and special summon out into our Mo Yi. Mo Yi will go ahead and reveal to reveal our emergence or the name, summon out a token. Then from here, we can go ahead and sync our monsters away into a Xi Xiao. Now, Xi Xiao will go ahead and trigger. So, Chainlink 1, Chain 2. Again, does not matter what you draw off of the Mo Yi. If, if you draw an extender, you draw an extender. It's all the more better. But it doesn't really matter. But from here, we can go ahead and use Xi Xiao to banish out our blackout to summon out a token onto the board then from here we can go ahead and banish mapura or sorry not banish power banish ashuna to go and special summon the mapura and then like i was showcasing in like my cards um that you're are very important you go into a backstay here and backstay enables two spins which is right here which is very very um insane super crucial as well um note that backstay has a secondary effect where it says you can target one card you control one level four lower monster destroy that card in the field and if you do special summon it so if there are ways for you to keep pushing like again it didn't really matter what we had um if we had long you want things of that nature you can play through it for sure you can go ahead and use backstage effect to pop itself or anything and just continue off from that regard so again it's just very nice how like yazi or sorry not yazi but tie it basically enables a lot of the cards um especially if you don't use ties effect to level modulate you just leave tie on the board to go into double fours it's still a backstage spin for two so it's really important in that regard um which is a nice play also so that's it for the second play guys now i'll just show you the third play so now getting on to the third play guys i think this is probably my most favorite play because there are a lot of sort of lines you can take i will showcase both lines here it's going to be long you want an ashuna again another two card combo that helps you facilitate a lot of otks board breaking things of that nature especially when you shout our opponent and it's very important to know that this is only two cards if we're going second we're going to have four cards the chance of them being an additional 10 year pretty high on top of that having other go second cards is very crucial as well so this is just to showcase that once you've depleted your opponent of all the resources you've used all your board breakers as well you're left on long yuan and ashuna so this is a line to note as well because what you do is you can go long yuan discard ashuna special summon a token now you can use ashuna here now it doesn't matter um, there are two plays that you have, right? You have essentially Mapura and Atara. I'm going to showcase the basic play, which is basically Mapura right now, but I will showcase the more advanced play later on as well. But from here, we can go ahead and use Mapura. Go into the Shishao. Shishao will go ahead and banish the Blackout, and Blackout will go ahead and summon the token, which is really nice. And the reason for that is because from here, we can go ahead and synchro our monsters away into our Shishing Long Yuan, and this will trigger our Long Yuan upon Synchro Sum to go ahead and burn our opponent for 1200. And then, like I said before, we deplete the resources. Let's go ahead and enter Battle Phase here. And then from here, we can go Battle Phase. So we swing for 12 we swing for 2900 now if you guys are doing the math i will showcase how low it drops your opponent so off of here the calculator will drop you so it drops you to 68 and then drops you to 4000 and then drops you to 1100 now this is very important because next spell or trap card they lose or monster they special them they also lose and the reason for that is she sing long one says if your opponent special summons a monster you can banish one of those monsters inflict 1200 damage to your opponent or when your opponent activates a spell trap card effect, you can banish that card if you do inflict 1200. So it doesn't matter what deck you're playing against, your opponent is left on 1100, meaning that the first effect they use or spell trap card they use, they end up burning for 1200. Um, and this is directly in response. It's not like the Fenrir cards where it triggers on resolution. So that's one of the lines. And then I'll just showcase the other line as well, which is going to be here 
which we go ahead and we'll just reset the thing i'll go ahead and here um we go ahead and put the cards back onto the board and then this is one of my more favorite plays it's ashuna go ahead and special out the adhara this is a very important way to go ahead and break our opponent's board if you guys saw when i went second or first sorry so now we have two tuners on the board so not only do we have a four and a six which enables us to go into the big guy big guy go into monk and then we can banish cards but we can also go adhara and long you want into yazi and then yazi can go and facilitate all sorts of other plays as well so it's very very important that you note that two cards net you three very problematic cards um so from here we can go ahead and we can go ahead and synchro into our yazi here long you want to is one of my favorite ftks into yazi again we burn for 12 and then yazi can go ahead and trigger and yazi will enable himself to go ahead and, and pop himself plus another card not before we go ahead and get the name to our hand again it doesn't really matter if you want to get the name or not but you guys will see here you go yazi yazi will go ahead and pop himself to go ahead and summon out a taya and then here we can go ahead and use taya taya will go ahead and banish to go into summon a e token then from here there are a lot of plays that you guys can do i'm just showing you super generic plays we go into like a backseat play here backseat will go ahead and um banish or shuffle sorry so shuffle two cards taya will go ahead and mill and you get you guys will know like there's all sorts of nasty plays you guys can do here so backseat will go ahead and pop to go into some moe moe will go ahead and use this effect to reveal to go ahead and summon a token and then from here we can go ahead and synchro away into our she shell and then she shell will go ahead and trigger depending on what you want to add you can add an emergence you can add um a blackout you can add anything like that that kind of helps facilitate and enable all sorts of plays no we also have a normal summon as well so if you have a nice little normal summon like ecclesia stuff like that it enables all sorts of other plays if you guys notice that where you want backseat pop the token you don't have to do backseat pop token what you can do is you can go backseat pop itself um reborn any of the guys here then synchro into she shall she shall get the moe normal the moe and then you end on she shall jacob berserker so it's another play that you guys can see so you guys can see like off of three combos alone just off of like the own engine cards it facilitates all sorts of otks or very generic plays that you kind of really need to know if you're going to play be playing short soul going second um going into the grind game as well but that's it for like my plays guys now i'm just going to quickly show you a go second replay or just a generic play that short soul does all right guys so now we're getting on to the replay so we are entering game three so this is going to be post side um and this is what i was just going to showcase you guys how important it is so again um we're just asking questions again always be polite to your opponent guys we're, we're always promoting good sportsmanship so that's really important we don't need the toxic nerd raging gamers but from here um our opponent's hand is going to be Drago back it kind of sucks d shepherd change for pod prosperity and econ he's on cash Chira. Um, rivalry vashuda long yuan ashuna and ashuna so this is very important because sorcerer almost always gets his board broken or there are so many cards that come in against sorcerer so it's almost important to note how to play through the follow-up so we go ahead he goes draw phase he activates d shift i'm like that's fine we go ahead special summon ashuna link the ashuna away because against cash carry you can't really pass because their monsters are pretty fat but here we go ahead and link into monk use um well i misclick here but we end up using vashuda effect to special summon up vashuda then use ashuna's effect to go ahead and summon up from deck which is going to be adhara and then here we can go ahead and synchro into she shall she shall go ahead and trigger to go ahead and add us emergence now you're probably wondering why i didn't add blackout and i'll explain it a lot of the times post side our opponent puts board breakers puts a lot of um go second cards as well so i didn't want the blackout to die to like a kaiju so if they kaiju me i lose clearly because it turns off two of my back row if they lava go me i end up losing as well because they end up clearing my back row evenly match i can only keep one card so again it doesn't really matter so i decided to just commit to the rivalry and then leave two cards in my hand the reason why i did this is because she shall can banish from um hand or graveyard to negate so even if i'm d shifter i can still banish the long yuan which enables my tie to keep playing um emergence is also a card that it'll bypass d shifter once the turn is over so emergence helps facilitate like a one card otk essentially um meaning that i can just sit on my rivalry so what i do here is I end up going um, into the standby phase. Um, he adds me what I add. I added the emergence. And then from here, he enters the standby phase. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to flip rivalry in the standby, meaning that it turns off Lava Golem. It turns off um, Kaijus as well, which is really nice um, because I want this card to stick no matter what, especially against Kashira. He's actually a very powerful card. My opponent ends up drawing Cyclone, which doesn't matter, but you guys will see here. He actually does a pretty cool play. So I activate rivalry. He goes, yeah, that's fine. Um, blah, blah, blah. He activates Pot of Prosperity. Vanishing six. I wish I had more engine or non engine. Sorry, I didn't get it. He ends up getting the Fenrir here, which is fine honestly we have like rivalry she shall it's pretty good um but from here he ends up going you guys will see he shuffles the card back he ends up going special summon out defender um activate fender um here i go change she shall to go ahead and banish so i banish the long yuan to target and negate and he changed econ to tribute the monster to take yes you can do this it's very similar to mind control and goes in this one i had to make sure before because i'm like okay can you even do that but he ends up doing that i had to double check just to make sure which perfectly fine my opponent was nice i was polite about it as well so it's perfectly fine guys again if you're going to go into a ruling you can be as positive and as nice as possible don't be salty and be like oh man like trust me like you're just slow playing whatever just be as polite as possible guys because you're trying to promote a healthy game state healthy environment
environment. For here, he ends up taking my monk, which is perfectly fine. When he takes my monk, I realize that he had the unicorn, so he's going to crash and then end up playing from there. It doesn't really matter because he had change of heart as well. So his board is absolutely crazy, man. Like I, I, I can't believe it. But he ends up going monk. Monk, go ahead and crash. Um, yeah, so it is an important interaction, especially about the unicorn, unicorn effect. Go ahead and use it. I'm like, that's perfectly fine because like if he adds theosis here, it doesn't matter. Um, because he can't like theosis out or rise up because they have rivalry on the board. But that's what I thought. He activates cyclone here, so now he pays 1k. He banished my cyclone. I'm like, man, this guy had everything. Like, he didn't even type it, man. I'm like, man, this is crazy. So he goes here, he activates theosis, he goes in, theosis is out, goes into his rise heart. He can't he can't go in defender because um I already uh Sorry, he already went through his fender. It's perfectly fine. He ends up going to Rise Art. Rise Art, he goes ahead. And because he already battled, he can't Zeus me also, so it's pretty good. But then he goes Rise Art, Bench at Theosis. Um, and then this will go ahead and Theosis will add in the Fenrir. And then he sorry, he goes Rise Art here to bench the monster. Um, which is perfectly fine. He ends up going. I think he benched his birth here. Yeah, he benched birth. I benched my top three. It's going to be part of desires of a shooter long one. So it does suck because all those top decks were gonna be insane. Doesn't matter. He ends up overlaying into Shangri La, and then he sets a card, of course, for the bluff, because why not? Because you can read that this card is emergence or sorry not emergence impermanence and then he goes ahead and passes and then standby phase he ends up going uses the effect to get the fender which is perfectly fine again that's what a lot of the decks are doing anyways um post side so he has protection plus fender banish my hand is emergence ecclesia now i'm going to showcase you guys the way and the order of operation where it's very important so right here i activate sorcerer emergence first and the reason why i activate emergence and you guys are wondering why is because not only does it check for ash blossom which makes my ecclesia a lot better it also puts a card in the graveyard which enables my she to go ahead and banish to um stop his fender from banishing my cards on resolution so again i'm checking for two cards almost three cards i'm filling my graveyard as well so emergence will go ahead and grab me the tie so i'm like okay you want there's no ash blossom in that regard and if my opponent ends up opening like an infinite permanent or something i'll know exactly right here so i go and special summon out the ecclesia and i go normal summon out the taya here so i was thinking a lot but i'm like you know what it's perfectly fine technically i could have gone taya banish summon the token and then here i could have synchroed into it just to check for the um impermanence which would have been better so hindsight 2020 but it doesn't matter because from here i'm like you know what i'm gonna synchro away into our backs here back to chain link one tie a chain link two it was perfectly fine because i'm like it doesn't matter if fenrir banishes but i'd rather just read um that that last card is not an infinite impermanence which i realized here it's not an imperm so from here all my chain links happen i go back to go ahead and shuffle out the fenrir and then from here tie will go ahead and mill so again tie will almost always mill our shuna which is very good and then like i said before guys Baxia will go ahead and pop himself to go ahead and tribute to go ahead and reborn the Taya, which I haven't used yet, or it could have been the Ecclesia, it didn't matter. From here, Taya will go ahead and banish to summon out a token, which will go ahead and become the um, non or oh, tuner, or sorry, the tuner. Trigger Emergence, which will go ahead and lower the level. Go ahead and special summon out Ashuna, which is here. So again, this is one of my favorite lines because it, it, it has a lot of plays that you can do. From here, what we can do is we can go ahead and synchro summon our monsters away into our Yazi. But before we do that, we go ahead and use our Adhara. Then Adhara will go ahead and banish to go ahead and add a name to our hand, which is going to be Vashuda. Yazi will go ahead and pop itself, pop the back row, because I'm like, what could this card be at this point? It's a Draco back. Lo and behold, it was it was useless completely. Um, of course, he's holding the Shangri-La um, because Shangri-La has a protection where it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects, so it's pretty good. Um, but again, Sorcerer doesn't really care about that. This will go ahead and summon out our Moyi. Moyi will go ahead and reveal to go ahead and summon out our token. I'm pretty sure our opponent scoops very soon, so I'm like, please no nib. Go into Shisha again, chain like one, chain like two. And then from here, I can draw and then go ahead and add long Yuan to our hand. And again, it's perfect game from here. It doesn't really matter what our opponent does. Like, he scoops anyways. But again, we go ahead and summon the token. And I, I showcase right here. Synchro into Cheng Ying. Long Yuan burn. Banish for Shooter. Shuffle the card back. Enter game and attack. So that's just another way of how we go second. When our resources are very depleted in the simplified game state. How we almost end up destroying cards and playing through a lot of negates. Or not even negates, but a lot of disruptions as well, guys. So I hope you guys really liked that type of video. If you guys want more in-depth source video, please let me know, guys. So guys, that was it for the video. If you guys liked the video, please go and leave a like on this video. Again, subscribe if you made it to the end of the video and you are not yet subscribed because what are you doing, guys? My name's Hamza. Like I always say, keep on shining, never go on your dreams. Peace.